good morning students parents and my very very obliged little presenters ashna and aman it's so difficult to present with them because they're still my children thank you so much for taking out time on a sunday morning to join us it really means a lot to us but i know by the end of this you will wish every sunday was like this let's start at the very beginning i'd like to introduce um when i introduce it's very important for me to understand the person i'm introducing in this case i know this little person from i think the time i know my son almost ashna is what i'd like to say a girl version of my son a very talented child an exceptionally passionate student and has always wanted to achieve a lot so when i see her in a startup which is in education believe me this child is going to change our country she's going to change your life and i'm sure about it there's no doubt but what is she she's a founder of created she's a harvard alum which is something that um, i like her to say she never needs to say it she's on a mission to inspire the next generation of innovators empowering them to build a solution this is her own words she has done her undergrad in pomona in psychology and this girl teaches me every single day about ai and chat gpt and not just me even ninad is learning so much from her she's really made my life easier that's a little about ashna aman is a new introduction in my life and i'm guaranteeing him that he's not going to see the last of me today Aman has done his undergrad also in Pomona that's where Ashna and Aman got to be friends but what's really cool is he's a social science research professional at Stanford and what he does in his words is field trips which i was explained a little better is actually understanding virtually the climatic change that's happening across the world so you can literally sit on your laptop and get a glimpse of what's happening to our world and nothing could be more powerful than this i love the story of sustainability i love the story of when people put themselves aside to work for the betterment of the world so aman i welcome you with really completely open arms thank you so much uh, between these two i don't want to forget myself but i guarantee you i don't have even half of what they have i've been a journalist by profession i have been working with 55 schools and colleges across the country i love essays I love the fact that everything about your application eventually boils down to how you write your story and I hope that's the picture that I want to bring into your lives. I also help you tangibilize your ideas. You may come up with lots of plans but to come up with one clear thought from which Ashna takes over and starts building the solution is what is going to make a very big difference in your life. Let's move on a little about a company Yeah. Yeah. Accept you has been bought into India by Admission Specialist. Accept you is the world's leading virtual counseling company. Admission Specialist is the founder of uh, the founder of I am the founder of that company. It's a B two B education consulting. Like I told you, we make sure our children deliver results. Created is Ashna's company. She is the founder there. And like you can see, her idea is to make sure your idea comes down to pen and paper. she helps to ideate create and build the projects for you and she also helps you participate in competitions be a part of the global community so when you actually go to college you have something to show beyond just a voice let's move on today's topic is passion project um ninad will go back yeah passion project includes what we call aligned activity and non aligned activity aligned activity is that which points towards your academic interest shows depth in your understanding of the subject illustrates your intellectual curiosity has an impact on someone it has to impact someone children please remember this non aligned on the other hand is outside of academics it shows your passion for learning creating displays leadership highlights your personality again must have an impact with this let's move to aman because aman is actually going to the museum of solutions a new museum that's opened in mumbai and i don't want him to go with too many problems of ours into a museum of solution so let's address our questions to you um students i ashna and i have made a list of questions but 
please feel free to write your questions in the chat box. We'd rather do your questions than ours. Um, parents, I'd rather have the students ask questions if that's all right by you. So as long as you're a student, just write student and write your question on the chat box. If you feel like unmuting yourself, go with it. Let's ask the first questions to unmute yourself, ask questions or write them on the chat box. Uh, hi, Amal. Am I audible? Hi. Yes, Shalini, you are. Hi. Heartiest congratulations. We are so proud to know about you. So I'm a parent and my child is in grade seven. He'll be writing his mm -hmm. finals for grade seven. And he's in the Sriram school, Gurgaon. So mm -hmm. what I want to know is like when we decide for these passion projects, does mm -hmm. it have to be with some reputed organization or they can just work with any grassroots level organization as well? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, that's a good question. Um, I, I think I think it can be with like any organization as long as the work that is being done is something that like, you know, really address uh, your child. So. Uh, like in the example that I gave, right, uh, the organizations that I mentioned, uh, one of them was literally a school, you know, peer mentoring organization that nobody outside of our school would have heard of. Uh, and the other one was a pressure vessel company that it, it wasn't like any of the, you know, biggest companies <laughs> uh, okay. making pressure vessels or anything. It was, uh, yeah, like this company that I was like fortunate enough to be connected to through, uh, you know, somebody that my mom knew. Uh, so, yeah, I think as long as it like aligns with your child's interests, it doesn't uh, it doesn't matter where you work. I think what matters is um, sort of like what uh, you learn. Yeah, what you learn and like how how specifically can you describe what you learn in your essays? I think that ends up being very important. True. OK. And do we need to attach some uh, certificates or some kind of documents along with that? Um, because, you know, Shalini not a question needed to be asked with Aman. It's a standard application okay. question. No, no certificates, etc. Okay, et okay, okay. okay. Ever need. Your okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Aman. Thank you so much. All the best. And um, students, just in case we didn't even tell you what our format is going to be, Aman leaves. I will talk about case studies of the past students who've got into a Stanford, Harvard, Wharton, and then Ashna takes on the most exciting part where she's picked up the forms that some of y'all have filled. And we'll show you how a possible passion project analysis can be done, right? So hang in there. We'll have lots of questions here. I do see Sachi with a question. Sachi, do you want to address something to um, Aman? Uh, yeah, I had a question. So you reached out to schools. So I wanted to know how you went about that with working with schools. Because oftentimes when you reach out to certain organ organizations, you don't get a response back. Uh, so how did you go about that? Oh, uh, oh, you mean for the? Uh, but yeah, I guess first, hi Saji, nice to meet you. But uh, and yeah, uh, you mean for the project where I worked with like a government school near my house? Yes, um, yes, that one. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I guess there it was. Uh, yeah, it was like a lot. Uh, sim uh, it, it ended up being like particularly simple for me because uh, yeah, it was like a school in the neighborhood. I think. Uh, uh, yeah, my father was one of the people who was like, you know, involved in like, uh, uh, yeah, helping like manage the school in uh, some way, shape or form. And uh, yeah, I think uh, we also knew someone who happened to know the Teach for India a fellow who was working in that classroom. Uh, so yeah, the honest answer is I got very fortunate. Can I try to I think answer? Sachi and Shalini, sorry, Ashna, one thing I'm addressing both of you and probably a lot of other parents and students here. I think getting in, sometimes you need a mentor, a parent. But once you've got in, then what you deliver on your own allows you to succeed in the next levels. Ashna, I'm sorry, I cut you. Please take it. No, I just wanted to say that I was also fortunate enough to work at a company where I didn't have a personal connection. And sometimes that is hard, but you do need to be consistent about the emails that you write, the follow-up that you have. Don't be afraid to pick up the phone and just talk to the person. Um, so uh, just a small kind of offshoot here, but I worked at a sports analytics uh, co company in my 10th, 10th grade summer because I was very interested in sports science. So I didn't have any connections to the founder or the team, but I, I knew their company phone. So I remember calling at least seven times, uh, you know, every hour of the day till someone picked up my phone and connected me. And by the time my 
manager picked up or my future manager picked up she was like yeah you've been calling a lot so we just wanted <laughs> to stop and that's how i got the internship so you don't necessarily like obviously mentors and parental connections play a lot a large part into it and it's very helpful but don't be dissuaded if you don't have a connection if you're you know if you want it enough and you follow up enough you'll be able to get there okay, okay. thank you very much again addressing sachi and probably a lot of the students here make your linkedin if you feel you've done some activities and can have an active page on linkedin there's a whole junior linkedin series that started now it would be very interesting for you to try and reach out to people from there aman the question that we have for you here um i think aman's reached his uh, designated spot um anika you've asked what were the extra curricular activities that helped you get in aman sorry can you take that question what were the extra curricular activities that you filled in your application that you feel helped you get in yeah uh yeah i think uh, so I, i guess um, I, in all honesty i can't ex- say you know which one specifically might have helped me get in but uh, i think yeah the, the three activities that i shared were uh, yeah definitely a- a big part of my application uh were there i mean there were some other smaller activities also like i helped uh, you know with my uh, school's mun uh, conference and that sort of thing but uh, yeah i feel like the ones that i spoke about uh, in my essay were the three that i mentioned the internship at the pressure vessel making company the uh, mentoring uh, program at my school and uh, volunteering at a, a school near my house Perfect. I mean, I am going to let you go. Students, don't worry. If there are any questions you have for Aman, send it to Ninad separately on his WhatsApp and we'll make sure Aman answers them for you. Enjoy the Museum of Solutions, Aman. Bye-bye. Thank yeah, you for okay. joining. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Let's do your analysis. So some of you have filled up your forms and those who filled up their forms are going to be the lucky ones today. because ashna has taken a lot of time to analyze and understand you remember students when you come to us the first thing i do is get to know your ikigai who are you what was your moment when everything changed this by new york times is known as mwec i did forget to tell you i am a new york times uh, workshop writer i am also a malcolm gladwell master class uh, student so i believe writing is everything whatever you might do if you don't know how to write it you'll struggle now when we do the analysis i can tell you that oh this is a great idea why don't we try and build it like this but who's going to help you build it who's going to help you find that job who's going to help you find that competition who's going to help you actually learn to fail and then hopefully come out successful to me i think no one better than ashna for this i have seen her work with students she's worked with my students in the past who've done phenomenally well so let's prove it to you okay of some sorts um here's the first student we'll start with ashna you ready yes absolutely thank you so much for that is shivani shodhan here hi shivani could you please unmute and let us know yes i'm here are you ready shivani are you excited yes okay <laughs> ashna go for it okay perfect so this is how we're going to structure it nine of you guys have filled out the form so i'm going to go through each of the nine uh, responses i'll kind of describe what i learned from your form and i've made a very concise and short summary about it and then based on just the answers that i got from the form form i'm suggesting some passion projects and other engagements that you could take part in to make sure that your profile is well built and differentiated for um college applications So when Shivani submitted her form um she stressed a lot about wanting to work with students with autism. She's been volunteering at a non-profit for a long time. She loves teaching and she loves global politics and math. So I kind of took those academic preferences, those skills and I suggested that potentially she could design a customizable math game for children with autism. So being a psychology major myself, one of the major challenges that children with autism face is that uh nothing is designed for them they have very unique sensory preferences so maybe shivani could work on an app that is accessible and customized to their preferences so it accommodates sensitivities it accommodates lighting it accommodates sounds things like that and she could you know 
uh, use this app to apply to a bunch of competitions in the entrepreneurship circle. Like as uh, Priyanka ma'am mentioned, the diamond challenge could be one such example. The second thing um, that Shivani mentioned that she's passionate about or a skill that she wants to work on is actually writing a research paper. So we could combine her aptitude for, you know, uh, for working with students with um, some sort of data analysis and math in conducting a research on how effective is the app that she's building. So she can take that math app and instrument it as a research tool, collecting learning data on students with autism and use that data to actually publish a research paper. So that way she gets depth. She's building on an app that she's already made and she's getting a research publication along the way as well. And thirdly, what would also be helpful for a student like Shivani would be volunteering with faculty who are conducting research on neurodiversity. What does it mean to live with autism? What is brain research saying? What is neuroscience research saying? Uh, what has been proven about the field or what is there to learn about um, students with autism? So <clears throat> just based on the responses, this would be a sort of plan that I would recommend for Shivani and help her actually build out uh, one or all of these depending on her preference. So I'm going to pause for maybe 30 seconds. And Shivani, I'm going to let you respond. Um, do you have any questions specific to this or any remark that you'd like to share with me? Um, this is really helpful, but I did have one question. I am not into biology. So then what should I do for my internship or research paper in that way? And also coding wise, I'm learning Python currently, but I, I mean, I'm not a big fan of coding as well. So something that could be related to economics, is that possible? Definitely. So let me address the second question first. Um, to build an app today, you don't need to be a coder, especially for something like a digital math game, right? There are so many no-code tools with the advent of chat GPT and other no-code tools that have come about that everyone can build a game without using coding at all. So we can stay away from that area if it doesn't excite you and you can still work on building the app. I did not include economics out here because I didn't see that represented in your form, but we can obviously tailor, you know, some strategies related to economics to help you with that. Now to address your first question related to research and biology, very good that you know that you don't want to do biology, definitely something you can stay away from. So an internship doesn't necessarily need to be um, in the hard sciences, right? You can get an internship even working with, um, different faculty members who are studying the impact of, um, you know, I'm trying, to, uh, I'm trying to get economics and, um, you know, neurodiversity linked. So the impact of providing accessible education, right? What are the economic impacts of differentiated instruction? So potentially working with a firm or a think tank even that's working to solve this sort of a policy problem from an economic perspective. That could be a stellar internship that would complement your profile. I'm going to jump in here, Shivani. What's your grad year? 2025. 2025. So in fact, I actually have a student whose interests are creepily like yours. She's actually present here today. Um, autism. And she wants to study computer science. Now, what's really interesting is if we can get Ashna to collaborate the two of you. She wants to do computers. And she has a personal story with autism. And you have a story with economics and non-coding. So if the two of you work together and she's grad year 2026, Sachi, you're with me? Yes, ma'am. Perfect, right? So if, Ashna, you think you can collaborate the two of them to work together with you, then they're different set skills they bring. But this is a traditional case of passion project children, what I was talking about. Aligned us interest non-aligned interest. Non-aligned interest in case of Shivani is a love for working with, you know, <laughs> volunteering with kids with autism, photography, design, non-aligned uh, for, for Sachi, her aligned is coding and non-aligned is a personal story within a family that she's seen about autism. So the way the two of them combine together and differently float out their um competitions or research is going to be very interesting here. And that's what I mean that that's when you, you know, going back to Shalini's question, no one ever needs someone reputed to work with, but you sometimes just need someone to give you the path. And Absolutely. hoping that's all we're trying to do today. We're not trying to shove ourselves into your faces, 
But this is, look how amazingly, if someone helps you build an app for autism and, you know, if Sachi does the coding and Shivani, you do the actual research writing of the impact, you know, the actual economic impact. It just combines together to make a phenomenally beautiful story. You know, Shivani can also help with the design of the app because the, that's where the unique selling point is, right? We're designing an app for autistic learners, which has definitely not been done in the past. So it's something that's unique and requires a lot of research going into the learning design of the app as well. Brilliant. So just like that, Shivani, Sachi and Ashna covered with one topic. With that, thank you, Shivani. Let's move to the next case. Thank you. So the next student is Ronak. Ronak, can you unmute yourself if you're present here? Ashna, I don't see Ronak. Uh, should we move to the next one? Yeah, let's move to the next student then. Uh, Praveer, could you please unmute and uh, confirm? Yes. Amazing. So Praveer also filled out his form and in his subject preference, he mentioned business engineering and a little bit of history. His skill preference was definitely research and he has a wide variety of interests ranging from cricket to skiing to guitar to climbing. So here's what I suggested he could do. Since he's interested in engineering, I suggested an embedded systems project where he would design smart cricket equipment. So imagine a cricket bat that has specific sensors that would measure metrics like speed, power, impact force, angle, and give each player a customized report on how they're playing on the cricket field or how certain shots are going. So this would be kind of like integrating his passion for engineering and his passion for business by coming up with a product idea that he can sell to cricketers or interested people to develop um, their skills, their cricketing skills. And it would align perfectly with his interests as well. The second thing that I recommended was that he could write a research paper on the physics of cricket. Now, cricket, any sport for that matter, integrates a lot of science. So he could choose any part of cricket that you love, like the spin on a ball or the you know trajectory of a ball as a batsman hits it across the field and write a research paper around that. That research paper, if you're in the IB, Praveer, I'm not sure, can also double down as your extended essay. The third uh, uh, suggestion that I had for Praveer was starting his own business. So act as a social entrepreneur and develop his own cricket equipment rental platform. So he could kind of loan out certain cricketing equipment to underserved communities at a price, at a low price, and then bring it back and lend it out to more people. So thereby creating a platform that gives access to sports and also create and also creating a sound business plan along the way. So with all these activities, I'd encourage you to kind of apply for social entrepreneurship competitions, hackathon, not hackathons, design challenges, innovation challenges, um, and also potentially get published in a research paper. Yes, thank you. Uh, Praveer, do you do you want to quickly update Ashna on what grad year, school? program you're doing so i'm in indus international school my grad year is 2026 and yeah i do see me using a lot of this related to physics and cricket but i did want to know is there any way i could use guitar as well because i'm extremely passionate about that probably a little bit more than cricket got it yeah so i stayed away from guitar actually because ronak who didn't show up he was doing something related to drums so i didn't want to make it repetitive for the students as well. But you could do a very Can simple... Can we go back to Rana Kashna and then yeah, take yeah, a yeah. look at something? Absolutely. Maybe, so not, maybe if that helps Praveer, we can take a look. Absolutely. So for uh, Rana, I had actually oh. recommended designing a metronome. It's again an embedded systems device uh, that will help kind of drummers uh, keep time without the need of audible clicks. So you could design a similar application and embedded system applications for your guitar that'll help with the tuning or the voice or the functionalities that it can afford. And similarly for guitar, sound waves and the physics are so apparent there that you could also focus your research paper on some element of physics within guitars and how potentially you could design even a smart guitar that's, um, you know, serving different functions that you may see fit. I'll obviously need to talk to you a little bit more about guitar and your passion to give you a more structured response but that could be an idea that you could explore interesting uh, thank Any you questions there, Praveer? 
Shall we move on then? Yeah, that's the, all my questions. Great. Thank you, Praveer. Um, let's move on to... Okay. Is Misha here? Yeah. Hi, Misha. So when Misha filled out her form, the things that I kind of took away from her, her form was that dance was very central to her life. In almost every response, even in like academic subjects, dance came through. So one thing that she's very passionate about is this uh, economics and is about is, da is dance and then the intersection with economics. Yeah. So what I've suggested here is she could conduct an analysis of the dance apparel uh, industry and actually write a research report on it. So what is the economic analysis of uh, apparel, dance apparels? What are some trends that she's noticing? How are consumer behaviors changing? What is the impact of economic cycles on the industry? For example, when Misha, um, this is not a dancer, but when Taylor Swift had a concert in a state in the US, their collective, um, I don't know if it's called GDP, but whatever the state level version of yeah. GDP is, rose by like 25% within one night. And yes. a tourism industry that had been dead for 10 years was suddenly revived. So even potentially looking at certain events like that, that spark these economic changes, uh, specifically to dance, would be a fantastic and innovative research paper to work on. Uh, the second was, since dance is such a visual platform, I would recommend doing something like a dance genomic vlogs. So com combine dance and economics and maybe... Um, showcase impressive dancers in your community and their talents and give them a platform to kind of showcase their talents. Um, and obviously you could be a part of this vlog as well, but it would be an endeavor to kind of know the dancers in your community and help publicize their work. And yeah. the last one was actually inspired by um, a tradition that happens at Northwestern University. So it's dance for a dollar. Um, it's essentially where you could organize a community dance off where people would need to play, pay a dollar or, you know, in our case, 100 rupees or whatever you want to call it um, to a dance. And you could donate the proceeds of that um, event to a charity of your choice, potentially a charity that promotes um, dancing or some kind of art form. So this would be um, sort of what I would recommend for you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, Priyanka, ma'am, you're on mute. Uh, Misha, quickly, grad year in school, please. Uh, I'm in 11th standard uh, and my curriculum is uh, DP. Got it. Diploma so you program. Are a grad year 2025. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I have actually seen this dance for a dollar. It's really cool. And just, just another idea is I don't know. Uh, what was your school's name? Uh, Fountainhead School. It's in Surat. Okay, so generally that school is very proactive with um, clubs. You yeah. can actually st start a dance, dance nomics club as uh, the name is dance nomics, and under that have these activities. That way, the whole pressure doesn't come on you. You become mm -hmm. the editor or something of the blog, but have children write the articles or have them scout the different videos and talk about it and showcase it and dance for a dollar can then actually become your annual event that way what happens is when you're applying this year in December you yeah. still have two projects but without putting in all of the work that's something that's again very critical for almost all IBDP students if you're in grade 11 Building a passion project means a lot of time and you may not have the luxury. So sometimes I strongly recommend considering a student club or considering a joint effort. Okay. Uh, Misha, questions? Um, no, I do not have questions. I'm really clear with whatever. With, uh, did it appeal to you? Did it make sense to you? Yeah, I did because uh, I'm really interested in this and economics. So uh, clubbing these both of these together will really help you. Remember, aligned, non-aligned children. It's very simple. Find one aligned, non-aligned, one aligned, and try and come up with ideas. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Maybe here at this point, Ashna, if you think we should take a pause and maybe one of the students who have not had the opportunity to fill up the form could just raise their hands and talk about themselves and let's try and give them ideas on the go. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. See, we're challenging ourselves in every possible way, kids. Okay. Any one of the children. Ooh, I see Anika. <laughs> I 
I see a lot of hands. Okay, we'll start with Anika Ria because I saw her name first. Is that okay? Anika, introduce us with like a short who you are, subject preference, and your aligned and non-aligned. Let's say, unmute okay, so yourself, Anika. My name is Anika. I'm my graduation year is 2027. I'm in ninth grade right now, going to Greenwood High, IGCSE board. So my aligned um, preference, like my activities that I'm into in school is like all the sciences, physics, biology, and chemistry. They never stop to aspire me. And I feel like I'm really interested in them and I understand them. It's like I'm, in, I'm weaker in subjects like maths because my um, logical sense, the ways I'm more into the sciences because I'm more adaptive and well-known to them. And my non-aligned preferences, I'm into sports and baking and not so much into arts and cultural stuff, but I'm really into basketball and um, yeah. Amazing. So can you tell me a little bit more about a skill that you want to work on over these next years, so many years before you apply? So would, would it be um, something like a research, public speaking, physical design, digital design, entrepreneurship? What excites you or what is a skill you want to work on? I feel like, uh, so I'm doing this project right now, actually, in my school. It's um, according, it's like this project where you write information about the worldwide current affairs and it really mm -hmm. spreads information easily. It's this whole project called Project Lida. So we're basically trying to spread information. So research would be my interest. Okay, cool. So what I heard was you loved the sciences and you love baking, basketball, and you want to work on research, right? Yeah. So there are multiple things that you can do here. So one would obviously be you could write a research paper related to the physics of baking. So gastronomy and actually just understanding how uh, baking happens is a deeply scientific concept. And you could potentially work um, to write a research paper about it. I would also recommend that you could, you know, maybe find a summer internship with um, a culinary school, maybe. I don't know if Cordon Bleu does internships, but potentially an organization like that, where you can actually get a chance to work in the kitchens out there and meet professional bakers and see how they work. On the more entrepreneurship side of things, um, what about creating like uh, smart kitchen or like... Yeah, this is not entrepreneurship. This is more techie, actually. Um, like some sort of smart kitchen appliances. So a smart mixing bowl that senses the consistency of the batter and adjusts the speed of whisking accordingly. Uh, if you're more interested in entrepreneurial ideas, um, you could launch something like a sustainable baking initiative, right? So um, creating a line of baking products made from environmentally friendly materials or a guidebook or an app for bakers to reduce energy consumption and waste. So how do you use solar ovens or incorporating, you know, physics principles to optimize heat distribution in baking? So there are a lot of avenues that you can explore at the intersection of your aligned interests, your non-aligned interests and your subject preferences. And I think the ninth grade is the perfect time to start because you can, you know, work on it uh, now and, really build consistency and depth in your activity okay thank you i'd like to jump in here and kind of understand how long have you been baking for well it's not kind of like a regular thing but for the past few years we got an oven because my mom and i really wanted to so basically yeah for the past few years we've just been experimenting and trying online recipes and what are the sciences are of key interest to you? Is it more physics or bio or chemistry? More bio and chemistry. More bio and chemistry. So again, going back to Ashna's idea, but twisting it towards, I know nutrition is a very, very important element of baking, any cooking for that matter. And chemistry, of course, the equipments, the, the ingredients you put in. Sustainability is in my mind, going to be the biggest word that's going to be used in colleges and not without a reason. So I'd love to see if there is some sustainability that you can talk about with biochemistry and baking. And that's the area we'd like you to go. I love the idea of designing some sort of a container or some sort of a measuring tool, which allows or kind of tells you this is the impact you've had on the globe or the wastage you've created even if it's a simple little tool and I know Ashna that you can do it because you've given 100%. me this idea earlier for another student and worked on it 
So I'd love that. And I remember uh, my student, the Stanford's uh, baking app was very simple. It was literally just calculating the cost. Because when you change, let's say, a flour to an almond flour, you suddenly don't know how to input the costs in. Mm -hmm. uh, Anika, at this point of time, just a warning, beta, you will need math. If you're applying for anything to do with sciences, math is an important composition of your life. Start working on it. If needed, challenge yourself to understand and love it. Okay? Fake it till you make it. Tell yourself you love math. Okay? <laughs> Believe me. All right. We will. Asha, this is fun. Can I take one more student? Please, yeah. In fact, even I'm enjoying this more than what I've prepared. <laughs> awesome. I saw Rhea Patel's Ninad, you need to help me. But I thought I saw a Rhea Patel's hand before I saw the rest. You tell Rhea me whoever was the first. Tempo. Sorry? Rhea, are you there? Could you just please yeah, come the, Yeah, Yeah, please. Could you please uh, tell a question? Uh, yeah. So uh, my uh, I'm graduating next year in 2025. And I'll be going to college in 2025 as well, obviously. And I'm in my aligned interests are biology and economics. And in non-aligned, I have baking, swimming, and um, also to some extent. I couldn't hear her. Could you? Yeah, she, no, I heard baking, swimming, then I couldn't hear anything. Yeah. Do um, we want to? Uh, yeah, are you still there with us? Could you please... Uh... Try to repeat. Maybe we can come I back to her. Can you see the you. other hand? I saw Arab's yeah. hand, I thought. Arab something. Arab, could you unmute oh, yeah. and ask Thank you. Yeah. Thank awesome, you. Arab. Thank Take you. it on. Hello. So, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah so uh, my name is Arab Roy and I'm in 8th grade uh, in Ahmedabad International School. I'm in IGCSE board. So in generally, I really like playing sports like cricket, basketball, and I'm really passionate about it. Other than that, I'm really good at coding and I love to play the guitar at like any family function. I'm always there like I want to play the guitar for, for you all. And then I also have a FIDE rating in chess and international rating of around of uh, 1100 wow. in classical and rapid. So I'm really good at chess and I, and I want to continue that as my passion. And in and talking about subjects, I really like math and I'm really good at it too. Like I'm always at the top in math, always talking. And I also really like story writing. I've published many stories, articles and uh, books. So mm -hmm. I really like writing also in general. Wow, so many diverse interests. So you have your computer science, you have your coding abilities, you're a great chess player, you like these sports, you like story writing. And uh, like talking about extracurricular, I have finished a MIT app inventor course. So I'm really into coding. And in, and in academics, I really like debate competitions. I have gone to interschool in many of them. And I also give like the extracurricular uh, Olympiads and all the logic. Calm have... down. <laughs> Arab, you're a classic case of too many, too much. Yes. You'll have will... to narrow this down, son. You're going to confuse your college. You'll applicant readers do not like too much. Okay. I think we've got a lot. Ashna, you want to go first with your ideas? Yes. Sorry. I'm just trying to process information because a lot came my way. So I'm trying to combine, let's say, um, uh, let's say chess and story writing, right? So, and yeah. then coding as well. So what if you could code an interactive story-based app that teaches people chess through a narrative? So you can dive into kind of the history of chess and um, how people used to play it. And players could progress through like a fantasy story where each chapter introduces them to a new chess uh, concept and, uh, you know, some challenges to solve. So it's not just teaching them about the game, but also walking them to certain. I I, I don't play I don't play chess, but I know there are those configurations and those gambits yeah. which you have to learn. So maybe walking them through those challenges through this kind of fantasy story driven approach. Um, the other thing that could be really interesting because you mentioned you did the MIT course as well was um, and you said you have a federation ranking. You could have a yeah. chess database analytics platform. So it could be a place where you can maybe 
scrape data from the federation rankings and then pro pro provide a detailed uh, analysis on what are some trends, what are the end games that certain uh, players usually use, any specific patterns. So do sort of like an analysis on the game and the players and give people access to that so they can prepare their next moves and their practice better. Um, if you're interested, I'm trying to think how we can get math in, but I'm struggling, but... Um, I do have an idea and a very simple idea probably, Ashna, here is um, I see a lot of these SAT, ACT apps that have come up and they're really interesting. They give you one quiz a day. So it's a very smart kind of a way of learning. And I'm almost wondering if there is one move a day that we could create for a chess app where you literally just, you know, you're going to be thrown into a move like, okay, if this is a position of da-da-da and da-da-da, what would you do and why? And okay. it's, it's a kind of learning, but it's also a kind of playing. And within that three minutes, you've only just bettered your game. Is yeah. that making sense? Arif, yeah. Is that yeah. So like we can give puzzles to an app and then like you yeah. have to solve the puzzle and give an explanation why. Exactly. So in a way, Arav, it's, a, it's an app which you have to design. So it's coding. It's also teaching and I always feel teaching is the best way of learning and then maybe you could have Asha you, um, no not you there was someone else who I was discussing from Harvard where it's like a case study competition at the end so the top 20 students so you can create levels out of like preliminary second third and those who reach the high platinum level those five six can actually have a game off with you and y'all can then do a competition of sorts or something like that. So you're learning as well. And if you're, sorry, one yeah. more idea just popped into my head. If you're interested in making a community impact, you could also design a smart chess board that blind people or people with limited tactile functionality wow. can play. Right? So chess wow. board that moves with voice command. So like move my pawn to E5 or move my knight to whatever. Um, yeah because that could have a full yeah, so i really like those ideas but uh can you like also suggest something which will include community work so i so i can give back to the yeah uh, society? i just, I just mentioned that's that. her last idea because that's it will the, be for a lesser privileged community less able exactly okay so like yeah, people perfect. For i think that was fun Arav, i think really we did yeah. a great job for you but Arav, warning too much come grade nine Focus on just three activities and build depth. Remember Absolutely. the word depth. Students are big learning here. You may be phenomenal in 10 things you're doing, but don't do it because it's not going to add value. Think of the one thing you want to be a specialist in and focus on that. So like in the three things, like one should, one should be sports, one should be a subject. That is something you'll need to focus on. We can do a personal. Um, I will send you all a package that you can have where you can sign up with Ashna, me and our teams where we will help you do these aspects. But we can't do that now. In okay. fairness for everyone. Yeah, um, I do think children who filled up the form will have to be given priority again, <laughs> Ashna, because they took Absolutely. the efforts. Let's Absolutely. move to the next one. Yeah, sorry, children, but we will try and come back. Thank you. Uh, so sorry, ma'am. Ria has been connected again. So she has requested if we could. Uh... Um, Maybe can we, we can stay at the end of the call for Ria and help her out there. Yeah, Ria, we'll definitely take you, love. We're not going to forget you. Don't worry. But we'll just move on to the form ones first because they took efforts to fill this up for us. Yeah. Oh, this was one of, I love working with students like Kavya who are interested in visual arts because I think there are very few people who clearly exhibit that. So, is Kavya Kavya oh yeah, it's Kavya. Yes. Yes. Oh, lovely. Good job. Good job, Kavya. Great, Thank great. you. Yes. I'm so glad you're here because I would have really, <laughs> I would not like to miss the slide. <laughs> uh, so this one, uh, what Kavya mentioned, she spoke about how she really wasn't sure what she's interested in. Then she had an encounter with a family member, and she was kind of pushed towards this realm of architecture, and that's her intended major in college as well. So she wants to focus on the visual arts. Um, she's very creative. She wants to think about, um, you know, uh, research as well as um, just developing her critical thinking skills. And she's also interested in event management in a big way. She's organized a lot of events um, in school. So first, 
thing that I think would be really cool as a passion project to work on is, as Priyanka Ma'am mentioned, integrating, you know, sustainability and architecture. So can we come up with 3D printed, affordable, sustainable housing models? So I would work with Kavya to kind of build out um, prototypes for affordable housing that prioritize sustainability. So carbon negative buildings or uh, improving urban density or maximizing the space that um, people need to live in and making small spaces feel big. So that would be idea number one. Second one, because I know uh, she probably hates coding, is um, developing like an art and AI chatbot. So a recent article in the New York Times actually showed that this year's biggest prize in art was won by an AI generated image, not actually an artist. So could um, Kavya kind of design a custom GPT, which requires zero coding, mind you, to generate artistic visualizations based on text inputs. So potentially for architecture or inspiration related to architecture. The third one was more centered towards events. So a cultural event series where she would kind of curate events on architecture and the visual arts across different cultures um, and seeing how different parts of like different people from different parts of the world design housing differently. Um, the last one could be research. So something more cut and dry, which you can publish, which would be on sustainable architecture and designing carbon negative buildings. It could even be uh, something that you build off of with the first thing that you work on. So Kavya, any questions for me here? Also just tell me your grad year. So I'll be graduating in 2027 and I'm in MYP right now. Oh, lovely. Perfect timing. Yeah. And what school, Kavya? Fountainhead. And you will be doing a personal project next year? Yes. Let's go. You could totally use any one yes. of these personal project for next year. And you must actually, because then you build depth. That's what I was trying to tell Arav. And I'll come back to you on that, Kavya. Whatever you do in your, and all the children here, if you have your personal project to do, please try and take one of our ideas if we've covered you or if you join us and take that idea into your personal project because you have a story to write right there. And then when you work on that in 11 and 12, one, it's easier. Two, clearly it shows depth. And colleges love to see that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so I just wanted to know any club ideas that I can propose to my school uh, aligned to architecture or design. Yeah, Actually, you you've just said it right there. I mean, how many sustainable architecture clubs are going to be a student run? And it's okay. phenomenal the amount of events you can combine. Just um, you said your fountainhead, which is Surat, right? Yes. Yeah, so do visits of old, hidden, unknown architectural pieces there. When was it made? Why was it made? Hold an event. Actually sit down, get ideas, come back and tell them, if we could rechange it and make it sustainable, how would we do it? Yeah. I'm borrowing from Aman's idea here, Ashna. I was going to say actually... virtual reality. Right. Just there. Yeah. See, I'm learning, Ashna. I'm not <laughs> I pick up what you teach me. So borrowing from Aman's idea, Kavya, I don't know if you were there when we were introducing Aman. So he does virtual field trips to explain the carbon or the or the actually the climatic change impact on the world. Mm -hmm. So you can borrow from there and actually do architecture across the world. And how yeah. sustainable are they? Yeah, yeah. I'll Think upon it and will try my best to work upon it. Thank you for that, Kavya. I appreciate it. All the best. But make sure you use it for your PP, personal project in school. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, <laughs> let's take one more form and then we'll go back to Ria Patel. Is Hitharth with us? Now, do you see Hitharth or should we move to the next one? Okay, let's just move to the no, next. No, my thoughts is India. Is India? Got it. Let's move to the next one. Is Gurshan <laughs> here? I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Gurshan. Okay, lovely. Awesome. So Gurshan's um, form had, had a lot of mention of travel. How he loves traveling. He's very interested in creative writing, and his subject preference was math. 
So this is a classic example of someone who has diverse interests and has kind of narrowed in on the three or four things that really appeal to him, which will really work well in your application. Because one, it, it differentiates you from a, a regular person who's interested in travel. And two, it gives you a lot of opportunities to go in depth on a project that's very niche. Um, so the first thing, and I, I noticed that he said he's from Himachal, so was a cultural exploration app for Himachal Pradesh. So explore some local customs, cuisines, historical sites, and through certain interactive features on the app, allow others to engage with what tourism is and what the nature in Himachal is like. The second one is a more math focused app. So it's a travel itinerary uh, optimization tool. So essentially you could build a mathematical algorithm to optimize users' tra <laughs> travel plans based on their budget and interests. So they could potentially enter a, an interest like I want to see the Taj Mahal and I have this much money and you could help your algorithm could help design the entire uh, experience based on that. You could suggest hotels based on the costing. You could suggest number of nights they could stay, transport, all of that. Um, and then the other one was more related to creative, well, not writing, but thinking about or meeting people from creative backgrounds. So starting a podcast where you would discuss the discuss the different te uh, latest technologies uh, involved with travel. So, for example, in India, Digi Yatra has become one of the biggest new age technologies. So, documenting those bigger policy level ones, but also really interesting, you know, tech products that people are building from smart bags um, to air tags, things like that, GoPros. Um, um, but yeah, those are some ideas that you could work on. And I had uh, an idea, Ashna. Can I jump in? Yes, please. Um, keeping in mind math very often and again you know my love for sustainability I'm extremely passionate about it I have and I've actually seen this in a college and I don't remember where where your itinerary has to be literally just downloaded onto this app and it tells you what is the carbon impact or your foot carbon footprint that you're going to be leaving and how can you reduce it via some chat GPT or some chatbot that they put through it. And I thought that would be very interesting for him to do a student run kind of an app where you just put your itinerary, even their schools. Kurshan, um, grad year in school, please. Uh, I'm in the Shiram school in Ravli and my grad year is 2028. 2028? Eight. Awesome. Eight. So your school probably has a lot of trips as well, right? You'll organize school trips every year. Uh, yeah. I'd like you to do this for your own school if there's a possibility. Just put the itinerary of every year into creating an app. Ashna, tell me if this is just my, you know, brain coming up with ideas or is it possible to even do it, tangibilize it? Mm -hmm. It is she, it's definitely she, possible. So, for example, if you book a flight on Google Flights, it tells you your carbon footprint right away. Right. So you, there is already existing calculators that exist um, to calculate those things for you and you would essentially be aggregating them. You would take, you wouldn't be recreating the wheel. We don't, we don't want to do that. You would essentially connect a bunch of APIs together. So you take from Google flights, you could take from other kind of resources that generate this already and put it all together in one platform and customize it for users travel. And then do some sort of an analysis to bring out the math at it. Absolutely. Like a research paper focused yeah. on it. Yeah. Some sort of algorithm, how you design the algorithm or maybe even like testing two different algorithms and seeing which one works better. Hmm. Kurshan, are you also into coding? He says computers, right? Oh uh, yeah, I am. I like computers. Yeah, I do like coding. I like this idea for you, Gurshan. I love the fact that it's something very close to your heart as in it's in school. The, the smaller you go within your idea, the better it eventually is. And I'll try and explain this to you, to all students. Um, if you say, I saw this in my own school, or I saw this in my own home or community, I saw a problem, found a solution. Those are the stories that hit the hardest, hit the best, right? Like we were talking about Aman as well. It was right in his small aspect where he was interning and he saw a problem he focused on it or when he was a mentor in school he saw that there was a need of something else and he focused on it so Gushan, this is what I was thinking that we kind of bring in 
the algorithm, we actually bring in the analysis, we bring in the coding and we bring in your love for travel right into your school. They must be doing one trip for grade four, one for five and so on and so forth. And yeah. just like that, even if you cut a 5% uh, footprint, why not? Gushan, uh, questions? Uh, no, I don't have any questions. I think it's a great idea. Uh, especially because it like involves everything that I like. So, yeah. <laughs> and you have the luxury of time, Gurshan, which really? means if you work with someone like Ashna and me, we have enough time to fail and stumble and get up again. Yes, thank you. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, Gurshan. We can now go back to Ria. Ashna, please mute yourself. Take a minute to eat. Ria will quickly update us again on... Uh, Sorry, kids, we've not had breakfast and I don't see us getting lunch. So, yes. Um, Ria, wait, are you there? Ria yeah, I'm there. I'm there. Awesome. Sorry, Bacha, you actually got lost. So, which is why yeah. we had cut you off. I was speaking and my connection just... Can you imagine? Went. You must have been so frustrated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't worry. Um, can you restart, please, Ria? Uh, yeah, so I'm in AIS and I'm graduating next year in 2025. And uh, my aligned interests are biology and economics. And for non-aligned interests, I have swimming, baking, um, aerial yoga, horse riding. And um, yeah, that's it. And also environmental science to some extent. Got it. Ashna, I can I can take on first if no, you no, want. No, no, okay. I was I was gonna ask, is there a particular skill that you want to work on? Hmm. Um, mostly economics because I'm really interested in that, and I would like to do that in the future as like a career choice. Okay, got it. And you said you're in the eleventh grade, correct? Yeah, I'm in IBDP. Got it. And are you more inclined towards a research paper, or entrepreneurship, or like a STEM ish product? Um, I feel like a product would be better okay. for me. Okay. Uh, question, quick question, Ashta. Are you interested in public health? Because I heard you say bio and economics. Is that yeah, also? I am. Yeah. Because public I health actually, is really big. Yeah. I actually have this kind of like a project, not a project, but like I did this thing for CAS where I went to underprivileged areas and I taught the women there about menstruation and menstrual health. So, yeah. Go with it, Ashu. Lovely. I'm trying to, just give me like a second to think. I'm trying to combine her love for <clears throat> economics, public health, aerial yoga, and come up with some ideas related to a product or a project that she can build. So before you said public health, I was actually going to go more down the route of, you know, like an aerial yoga, uh, like the uh, uh, like an aerial yoga equipment marketplace that you could develop. So like an e-commerce platform where you could, you know, specialize in selling certain aerial yoga things. But now let me rethink based on this public what health. What if we go without aerial yoga? Because, you know, she's in also we don't have the luxury of time with her. Right, she's in the 11th, correct. She's in the 11th applying this year. So I was almost thinking, one, definitely a research paper. Right. And it could it could talk about, uh, you know, one aspect of her love, which could be, you said yoga and cooking, no, baking, something baking, else she yeah. said. Yeah, baking. baking, yeah. We have so many bakers hmm. on this group. Sorry, Auntie, were you going to say something or should I? No, I was waiting for you to take oh, okay. on. So with Ariel, I mean, I know we decided to stay away from it, but just one idea could be the, what about looking at, you know, the economic ba barriers associated with um, aerial sports or activities in general? So could you write a research paper or, or you know, draft some sort of a proposal on um, how do you get more people interested in the sport and how it could be a public benefit? Yeah. That could be an interesting project that you could work on. Um, you could also study like health economics of recreational activities. That could be definitely a public health research paper that you could think through. Um, even potentially starting some sort of campaign inside school, a campaign or a club, whatever you prefer, on injury prevention or um, 
creating some sort of um, mental health and nutrition well-being sort of thing that combines public health as well as uh, your love for both baking so nutrition as well as you know sports like yoga so mindfulness related things um yeah. i was going that direction i thought mental health will be a very good topic it covers economics it covers public health and it covers her love for sports yoga whatever you know the whole meditational mindfulness aspect ria do you do you think mental health is something you feel strongly about or not really yeah i actually do feel strongly about that i think you should go that direction for sure then keep mm-hmm. in mind you have very little time so you cannot yeah. do something that needs a lot of collaboration yeah you have to look at something that is more single minded at this point of time while i love collaborative students all the children who are present here please remember the luxury of time is very important to keep in mind on your passion projects so in your case ria i would say start with a research paper and maybe create a podcast of sorts i mm-hmm. really think these are the two things you should focus on okay podcasts are very popular very powerful Hmm. and i watched this one which is called the stanford um it's the power of psychology i think and it's really interesting where they bring different mental health aspect students of course blind with no names on the on the podcast and talk about it and at the end of it the result is to see how could psychology help you can say the end result will be how can um Uh, uh, something like aerial yoga or any other kind of mindfulness help you know so yeah. you could, those five questions you ask them one would be have you considered a workout what is a workout that has helped you mm-hmm. also i had this question so could i actually do a blog instead because one of my friends has a blog and she's doing it very well it's about it's a it's not technically mental health but it's very related to that so maybe okay. like she could join my podcast or like i could join her blog and collaborate sometimes not very often but yeah i mean collaboration that- is a good thing the only reason priyanka ma'am mentioned that it shouldn't be done is because you're losing out on time so if you think yeah. you're able to balance the collaboration along with getting your podcast or blog going Mm-hmm. It, it works it works out it's just that if you're doing it alone you can go faster that was the okay, only yeah. Uh, yeah remember piggy backing not needn't always be fast sometimes it can be a bad move okay so just remember that yeah okay thank you okay. um thank you so much welcome we will take on one should we take on one more light student ashna sure yeah because i think we only okay, have cool. two more case studies left from the forms i'm just looking yeah so we have a hand up that we can take unmute yourself anyone uh, ma'am hi this is maiza hello hi maiza so bes can i tell you my interests yeah mm-hmm. right so i enjoy debating in mnuns and i've actually won uh, quite a few awards in mnuns I also started an initiative in this year, and I'm in uh, grade nine, batch of twenty twenty seven, Sri Ram. Um, so it's about basically like um children's health, and um food insecurities, and I've been working on that since the beginning of this year, and um I'm really interested in working for environment, and I'm a head editor for a magazine on environment in my school. and i've been i'm not really been inclined in sports that much ever but i really do enjoy badminton and or uh, maybe i can do something about that but just for fun i also um, what i want to do is be a lawyer but um so most of my interests are based on that but i also enjoy writing and i've written a book in the past and i'm really good at writing essays so clearly clearly she has a voice ashna and right. she wants to advocate it for a cause Absolutely. what's the cause that moves you the most maiza i think environment and um, also food insecurities in child health in like um in like cases like some cases 
Mm-hmm. So one idea that's coming into my head very clearly now is what if you uh, organize like a zero waste food festival? So you combine wow. kind of your you know interest in access to food and uh, and environment, and you essentially feature workshops and cooking demonstration, focusing on reducing food waste, composting, um, the environmental impact of food packaging, things like that. That could be an amazing festival which is super unique and tailored to you. Um, <clears throat> idea i just had a question is there any way in which we can bring children's health into that so children's health would be a big part of this right because um you want to cook for children eventually so it could be like a different part of the workshop or a different feature or like a specific vertical within the festival that you could host food and health are never two separate words i'm very passionate about this and ashna yep. will know she's eaten in my house yeah, um they're exactly. never different Uh, what about also another way sorry another idea would be um coming up with a sustainable food production model so this would be more of like a research paper and a physical product if you're willing to go that deep Uh, um so it's essentially like in education systems how can you demonstrate so for children right how do you grow food with minimal environmental impact so things like how do you create a vertical farm in your school how can you you know use hydroponics or um, any kind of you know new age farm design that helps produce food at a small scale in a sustainable way that children can also engage in um, that I'm could be another i'm going to give you a smaller idea ashna if that's okay yeah. i want i always feel when we talk about advocacy i always say come back to a community closer to you so my something that's bothered you you drive or you go in a bus from your home to your school have you ever looked out and said that's horrible that's not right you know the degradation of the environment there could be a lake there could be a, a garbage point there could be a smell it it could be anything it could be the bathrooms in your school anything start advocating small try and create a campaign write about it collect people make a blog of it reach out make a letter a petition and i'll share with you something really simple that one of my students did and he's in u pen now um he was bullied and he was bullied bad in in his school and just because he was fat and it became too much he went into depression he had to start taking pills he broke down he wanted to change his school he changed school it was as bad there because social media takes you over before you actually physically you know even change schools so he got back to the school and this time he put his foot down and he said i'm going to advocate against it and he went small so first he would roam around with a paper that i am fat i am that is not the reason to bully and every day he came up with new quotes and new ways every single day because his school put their foot down and said that if the bullying is not happening in school technically they are not allowed to have a legal um stand on it the bullying was happening outside of school on social media right and no one knows whose account was bullying it so he started doing that he would stand outside school and in two months there were suddenly five other children standing outside with him in school then other people started sharing that on their social media and he you know we got him to have a meeting and there were 45 students who attended from nine different schools like 10 different schools he eventually filed that he worked with a lawyer he filed a petition it was rejected in the local court they actually the parents paid all the parents of these families paid for it to go to high court it actually touched the supreme court and they're still fighting the case and he is studying um human something human policy and advocacy in uh, upen now wow okay. so it just it, it started really small believe me i was a part of the story so i know how small it was mm mm-hmm. and we have another child who's going that route now because of of religion based racism she is struggling and this is the route we are making her go as way well. yeah yeah awesome did we eventually get to you ria oh, this is maisa oh sorry maisa 
Maisa, you're done. I'm so sorry. I'm so confused with these. Any questions? Right. So, um, just another question, if you don't mind. Of course. Is there is there anything that I can do that's related to writing? Because I really I'm very interested in that, and I think I'm quite good at it as well. And like debates and writing, if we can merge those two. Maisa, everything you do, whether Ashna's idea or my idea, will have to be written. Yep. You cannot not write about it. Of course. You might have 10 people watching you or standing by you, but you might have 100 people reading it. And fortunately for us, there are many magazines now that are encouraging articles from the teenagers. There yep. are lots of digital magazines as well, digital newspapers. You can write in your own school's paper about this whole campaign you've created and build on it. And in turn, in turn with a writing company, in turn with uh, any kind of a publication house. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Like thank there's you, also a startup son. working in Mumbai in case food and access is of, and even children. So it's called Sarthi. I don't know if they're still operational or if they shut down, but essentially they host a lot of um, content that will help underserved communities understand nutrition and better feed their children. So if you want to intern for like... Um, content creation for Sarthi or write they all do everything over video because you know underserved communities don't know how to read um, but they require a lot of content writers on their platform to actually help build those videos but you could even in turn as a content writer for a company that's disseminating information about these topics it could be a fantastic opportunity that's true there are also non-profit consulting houses like Dasra which mm -hmm. take um, content writers high school content writers Okay, thank you. Awesome. Um, Ashna, which way do you want to go? We have another 15 minutes and then we'd like to open the floor for questions, etc. So we have two more students that's, who submitted responses. Okay, let's bang that out. Okay. Words and, then, and yeah, then we can do more of these and our questions. Do we have Dhruv on the call? Dhruv, could you please unmute? Drew, he can you hear me? Uh, he's there, actually. Oh, sorry, you might think just glitched. No <laughs> worries, no worries Drew. Thank you for being there. <clears throat> so, Dhruv's uh, form, I'm sorry to say Dhruv, but it was all like one word, one sentence answers. So, it might be a little generic on my end because I didn't have too much data to work with. What, I, what came through strongly was that he's a very STEM-focused person, so he enjoys math, chemistry, biology, and he loves kind of environment, um, and reading and cricket and chess and those kind of things. So first recommendation that I had for Dhruv was he should, and he said he wants to become a doctor. Eventually he wants to pursue medicine. Uh -huh. um, so the first thing I suggested for Dhruv was actually work at a hospital. So intern with a doctor, be a scribe, um, see what it means to actually work in those settings and what doctors need to go through on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it'll be a great experience, will show really well on your profile and it's directly aligned to what you want to do in the future. Second, because you have a deep interest in biology, you could write um, a review paper or a research paper on an interesting topic in biology. So if you're interested in genes, you could write about CRISPR, any other part of medicine that you're interested in exploring, you could write a research paper on that. Um, in school, what I would recommend is start like a biology book club. So, um, you know, get students to talk about articles that they love or get students to write their own articles about what they what their take is on biology and new age in, uh, innovations in healthcare and biology and then finally publish that into a you know into a book where it's you know the biology club's book that everyone from the school contributed to and you can actually um, you know sell it or not sell but distribute it to other members in the community um, and then I would also recommend taking a course in genetic engineering, if that's of interest. Um, so you, here you can dive deep into a very technical aspect and you can show that you went outside of the academics to focus on a skill that you're passionate about. Dhruv, can you jump in and tell us your grad year in school, please, and your curriculum? I'm in the Shriram School at Ravali and I'm graduating in 2028. And you are CBSC, ICSC or IB? ICSC. I see, I see. Okay. Um, Dhruv, I would like to reiterate what Ashna said. Um, are you a U.S. citizen or an Indian citizen? I am a U.S. citizen. Got it. So you can do the pre-med route and, you know, if necessary, be there as well. Got it. Um, 
There's one thing I do want to tell you, Dhruv, and I've worked with many, many students who've gone the pre-med route. One of the key takeaways all of them say is that you must scribe at a hospital. Exactly what Ashna said, because you'll instantly know if this is for you or not for you. A lot of times we feel we want to be in the biomed, but it's very possible you don't want to be a doctor. You want to be in the research area. You want to be in the lab area. You want to be in the development of the innovation area or the product research. So everything is open, but it's only if you've interned at a hospital. Many hospitals allow what we call work shadow in our country. So I would really like you to see if you can find a contact there and do that one first. Um, Book Club, I love the idea, Dhruv. I don't know if you have heard of Siddharth Mukherjee. You're too um, young to know, yeah. probably. So he is the number one oncologist in the world. He studied at Stanford and teaching at Columbia now, I believe. And very incredible how he writes books on biology. But he makes them sound so human. They're largely about genes. I'm fascinated. So I read all his books. 50% goes above my head. 50% I kind of read and understand, but they are phenomenal. So if you do a book club based on the interesting books that are coming up on bio or interesting startups that are coming up with bio and gene tech related and actually analyze, discuss it, I really think that's going to add tremendous value to you. And your school, I know Sriram, you kind of... Um, Forming a club is not the easiest, but they do allow it. So see if you can work on this one. And then automatically your review paper and everything kind of comes within that club. Yeah, I kind of, I actually quite like these ideas. However, I'd also like to maybe incorporate chess into something as I think I'm a very avid chess player. Okay, so I don't know if you've been listening, but uh, Ashna actually gave a phenomenal idea. Ashna and I were talking about another child with chess, mm -hmm. how they could build an app to kind of, you know, one move a day and solve puzzles, etc. Then there was another one, which was a smart chess board. And we can get those two kids to collaborate together if they work with Ashna to make a smart chess board through. And I love that idea. The fact that you're helping the slightly lesser abled to be able to play chess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I quite like that idea. Probably I would love to see chess, that. Right? I think and we had good. another child. So if the other child's also yeah, willing. I got that idea. Awesome. Was that Arav? Yeah. Uh, Ar yeah. So Arav, Dhruv, let us know. Then we'll try and collaborate and create a group. And children, remember, if you're in the younger batches, nothing like collaboration. Because you literally have to do 40% of the work and get more than 100% of the success. So never think, oh, my idea is being shared. Not true at all. And plus, like, I'm in age grade, so there's a lot of time left. <sighs> I think so is true, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. also... So yeah, so we beautiful. both can do it. imagine what you both can create. I mean, Ashna, I find this really exciting how yeah. we manage to create these little niches amongst. Yeah, kids. there'll obviously be that skill offset, right? So like what Dhruv can handle, maybe what Dhruv can't handle, Araf can do and vice versa. So, I mean, collaboration in the younger ages is deeply encouraged. Yep. Awesome. Should we take the... Awesome. Now we're all together. We have another 20 minutes. We will take questions. I see two hands up for profile yet. Are you okay if we do those two, Priyanshi oh. and Ridesh? Let's do it. Asha? I think even Prisha has her hand up. I see three hands. Oh, you do? So okay, that's it. Prisha we can only all, yeah. do those. If we do those three, we cannot take questions. As a group, are you all okay about that? We can take some questions, right? Yeah, let's, let's see how it goes. Okay, come on. Let's start quickly. I, I see Ridesh first. Ridesh, go for it. Yeah, so my name is Ridesh Barker from uh, ninth grade from AIS and the Bart International School. And my areas of interest are computer science, mathematics, finance, and computer hardware. And non-aligned uh, interests are like coding, traveling, football. And I have done MIT App Inventor course, just like uh, Aro said. And I've also done one ML AI course where we have to build apps related to a, we started from scratch, that is a software also. 
and right now recently i'm building a digital clock that is used for du duration that is for a football match so these are the passion products that i made till now so what what is your blog about no it's not a blog but it's like a hardware project from like uh, what say i'm building a digital clock where it is used to what say me for measuring the durability or i say the duration for a football match going on a digital clock sorry i heard blog okay a digital uh, clock me measuring the duration of a football match yeah so is I, football I your non aligned interest do you play it yeah yeah i do play i i also go to clubs like in one of the gmdc club in uh, ahmedabad got it so computers and soccer are the two things we should kind of look at for you ridesh for just you know for the sake of time now yeah right. but i can give say so computer science and finance are my most uh, what say i would passion i'm just taking one aligned and one non aligned for the mm -hmm. sake of convenience yeah let's yeah, stick to sure. computer science and football it'll be easier to kind of talk yeah. So the yeah, students sure. will be going next. Remember, give us one aligned, one non-aligned, so we can be clearer on how to get you on. Yeah. So one idea, because you're super interested in hardware, is uh, designing a football helmet safety sensor. So, oh, sorry, this I'm thinking about American football. Football. This is more like soccer, right? That's what you're soccer. thinking. Soccer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Soccer. So maybe designing some wearable sensors that you can put on soccer players. and collect their performance during the game so you can uh, measure things like speed how much uh, their acceleration was how much distance they travel and then you can use your computer science algorithms to analyze this data and create a predict create predictive models so you can influence how coaches will be thinking about selecting the team or what should be looked at uh, based on players past performance that could be one um the other thing that should be really interesting since you've done the MIT app program is you could design an uh, augmented reality football training program so maybe simulate different scenarios on the app and then uh, the team or the players have to actually execute on that and then the app is collecting data based on computer vision on what the people are actually doing on the field um the other thing that could be really interesting because i know this is a big problem with soccer in europe is hooliganism right so a lot of crowd management is required to make sure that the losing team that's people... exactly my idea are yeah kept in check so having a network of you know sensors and cameras to monitor crowd density movement um, and making sure that it's a safe viewing experience for everyone so that could be something that you work on i also i also wonder and i'm not sure but i see i i i watch soccer thanks to my son i also realize that it's very difficult to understand is it a foul or not so if, i'm sure at school level also if you do wear a wearable device which kind of records a movement of a hand or a touch which was wrong it, it would be interesting to go that way to yes. just also you know kind of define the players and make their algorithm so shridesh we will move to the next case thank you simply because we are shortage are you okay with the idea did you like it was it interesting yes sir. yes it's very helpful when i am playing soccer matches or so perfect good job I have um Manya here who's written she had actually filled up the form so we'll just take Manya and then we'll go back to these Manya just quickly tell us one a line one on a line Manya Okay uh Priyanshi then Uh hi ma'am um my name is Priyanshi Bhausar and I'm st uh, I'm am I audible Yes yes yeah so i am in uh, fountain bit school in surat and i am in grade 9 and my grad year is 2027 um i have a good interest in biology and chemistry and a little bit of physics and for my non alignment i don't have actually i don't uh, it's like very vast so I like public speaking. I the one thing that that I love doing is doing community service. As in, I like contributing to the community in any way. Got it. And okay, what so are you most passionate about in the community? Which community would you like to benefit the most? So, students, these are the, the kind of questions children. we need you to kind of start addressing and asking yourself as well. 
sorry priyanshi uh doing community service to the underprivileged children and yes i've been uh, doing giving trinity exams uh, since 5 years so i'm in grade 7 now mm -hmm. of trinity Got it. which instrument no yeah, uh, the public, public the communication okay. skills wala well. so what i'm hearing is this intersection of biochemistry communication and community service that's sort of the three things that you would like to focus on so yeah because right now i don't really have an idea in my mind even in my for my career i mm -hmm. i just said community service because i think that's really interesting right now for me definitely yeah that's fine priyanshi and that's something we'll help you when you know yeah, we yeah. we help you address it later so don't worry about it too much so yeah, one thing in india specifically that's a big problem mm -hmm. is access to clean water right so could you do a biochemistry of clean water initiative so it'll be a community service project um that focuses on testing some sources of water for contaminants microplastics and educating the community on the health impacts of water pollution and how they should um you know better treat the water bodies around them that could be one thing that you could focus on yeah the so i have my uh, personal project uh, next year ranchi sorry you'll have to just let her finish and we'll give you one question at the end okay um sorry. something no i no i no i the other thing that you could focus on is potentially because you're interested in serving under uh, under privileged community uh, under privileged uh, children could be developing some biochemical science kits so you know curating a set of experiments um, and kits that you can uh, distribute to government schools and affordable private schools and it could be as an initiative to you know encourage early interest in stem and helping students who don't have labs in their schools get access to these kind of experiments and get interested in biochemistry in school you could start a biochemistry club obviously so you could uh, focus on sustainability bi uh, biochemistry and it could be you know you could conduct uh, projects like how do you like what are some biodegradable materials like you can curate that club experience how you want it to be but essentially thinking about topics that you can speak about and make presentations about for sustainability and biochemistry i think those three yes. are good yeah, ideas Anshi, question so to be true i did not find the first two ideas really interesting but the club idea was actually really nice because i like to work with people a lot mm -hmm. something that has communication in it is one of my really favorite things to do so can you suggest Between so, uh, yeah, I am doing a business, an online business of creating, uh, scrunchies in lip balms. So that helps me work with people. So can I take that as my personal project? Yeah. Sure, sure you can. I mean, we don't know you enough, Priyanshi, to be able to comment on it. I'm sorry. I'm going to be really honest about it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you I for mean, your time, though. We will I move on to the next. um pranjal yes uh, good morning my name is pranjal uh, i am currently studying in cpgis pune i am in 8th right now my aligned interests um, are more like on on the commerce side than the science and for my non aligned interests i am like i love cooking i'm quite passionate about cooking so and uh, i like to do yoga as well but i would like to go on on side of cooking more so. so when you say commerce do you mean like finance business management entrepreneurship what do you, what do you what do you mean by that entrepreneurship entrepreneurship so you're saying you're interested in uh, entrepreneurship and cooking yes yeah Wow, that's a great okay. one actually, Pranjal. Yeah. Right off the bat, I mean, even if you start a small little interesting business or a startup, it'll be fabulous. Absolutely, absolutely. There are so many ideas. Um, yeah, you could. I know India actually doesn't allow this, but some equivalent. Maybe you can do it at your school, having like a food truck program. So mm -hmm. you know, essentially helping. Uh, feed people in your community by moving around so go to different underserved communities in your food truck and cook for them that could be a wonderful initiative that you can try to work on uh you could even start a cooking subscription 
question box business. So you uh, kind of pre-measure ingredients and send it to people who are interested in cooking. Um, and you guide them through a series of recipes that you've perfected. And it could be something that they can do under 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, things like that. You could also potentially work on a nutrition and meal planning app. If that's of interest. So how do you set your dietary preferences, your nutrition goals, and your budget? And how can you kind of... Um, make sure that you meet all your goals um if i'm trying to think what else you could even do something on the realm of content production so something where you get to eat at really fancy restaurants and then <laughs> you know make videos about the dishes that you've tasted across um different cuisines because that Actually, could be something what about that's your like... canteen let's go small again do you have a canteen yeah yeah we do and, uh, you know, maybe you could start something really so really small, but take over the canteen day. Mm -hmm. you know, where you students get together and y'all take over the canteen, y'all cook. And I know this happens because this happens in a Calcutta school. And you decide the menu, you decide the health, you decide the sustainability, zero waste impact, whatever you want. And the proceeds then can be given for sub the betterment of some part of your school. I just think such a small aspect, it shows entrepreneurship, shows leadership, but your school will be delighted and the letter of recommendation that you get is really phenomenal. Uh, sure, Absolutely. I'll try to. I really like the idea of the like the small startup, the canteen one, and I'll uh, try to like do it, start it in my school. Thank you. And let idea. us know if there's any way we can help you. We'll be very happy to do it. Sure. And we have the final now because I Thank see you. that the others probably want to ask questions but can't. Um, does anyone have any questions beyond their profile being analyzed? Uh, I had a question and I had wanted to have my profile analyzed. Who's this? Okay. Uh, Prisha, I'm from AIS. Okay, so Prisha, first tell us a little about your profile then. Make it simple, simply because yeah, of the yeah. lack of time. Of course, uh, my name is Prisha Roy. I'm from AIS, also from Ahmedabad International School. School. Uh, I love reading and writing. I think I have, I read eight books this year itself. I think uh, that's one of my top. And I do a little bit of sports. I used to swim and I am uh, in at into athletics. And my favorite subject is maths and physics. Okay, so from here, right? Physics, writing, and athletics. That's kind of your jam. That's what you want to work on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So one, because you have the benefit of kind of the physics and math intersection, one thing you could work on is, again, like a wearable device, as I recommended for a bunch of other sports initiatives, right? So helping yeah. track athlete performance, getting feedback on form, speed, endurance, those kind of things. Uh, one could also be um, an athletic, uh, no, like a, an e-book series. So combine your writing skills with, you know, physics and explore how different physics concepts manifest in different movements and sports. Um, so you could explain the scientific principles as to, you know, why when you're playing uh, or when you're running, why should your stride be a certain length or why should you propel with your hands, things like that. So kind of just writing more about the physics behind athletics. Um, you could even do a podcast, as so many people have suggested, on different athletes in India and giving them some, uh, you know, not giving them, but, you know, learning more about the people who are working on uh, making India proud in the field of athletics. If you want to go small, you can even start with who's in your school and athletes there and then kind of expand to more uh, of a state and a national level platform. Um, I'm curious, does she like writing or does she like reading? Prisha? Uh, yeah, I like both, but I prefer writing. Okay, fiction, non-fiction? Fiction. Interesting. I have, have you, a non-fiction, but I can have write. Have you seen any of these podcasts which are 10 books of the year? There's New York Times, there's Washington Post, there's... Uh, BBC, they all do the 10 books of the year series. I have I have not attended the podcast, but I've read the articles on them. Okay, now I think that's a phenomenal way to start, you know, probably yourself. Make your own 10 books of the year series or, you know, two books of the month series, if you please. 
talk about what you like do your whole um, are you an igcsc student yes i am so you know what writer's effect is you know what audience impact is do all of that and you can move towards series like you can say this month i'm going to take books on physics this month i'm going to take books on biology and actually create different series and that will be really interesting and you can actually reach out to those authors and you'll be surprised how many of them are willing to come to your podcast and talk to you mm -hmm. okay you can even in turn or pr probably learn a little bit more about kinesiology if you heard yeah. of that subject. can you uh, can you tell me again kinesiology so it's um how physics and sports uh, phys no, it's actually physics and biology combine in sport okay so you you know, potentially intern with a professor who's working on or research with a professor who's working on those kind of topics or even just take an online course on kinesiology. Yeah, uh, I had one question before this. Uh, how do you like, are there any tips on organizing a podcast? Because I think that idea appealed to me. You will have to look them up online and we will definitely be able to help you if you are working with us. But there are enough online support. Don't worry. Very, okay. very easy, Prisha. Okay. All right. I see hands, Arav and Pranjal, I'm assuming they're old hands, right? Oh, they're yeah. no question hands. Okay, um, no, anyone, I have a question. any questions? I have a question. Go for it. So, um, talking about podcasts and all and giving back to the community, I'm not talking about me like in general. Um, how can we like actually like help like if I choose any sport like suppose chess so like can I like uh, talk or like teach a group of blind uh, chess kids and like actually teach them play it can be part of the community work in general of any sport. I would like you to say, mind, be mindful of this is something recently I learned in my New York Times writing workshop. Be mindful of what you don't know and have never experienced, Tara. Um, it's very difficult to work with them and hope they will learn. It's easier to teach them in some way um, through an app or something that if they want to do it, they'll do it. The difference is if you sit with a child across the table and you are like, oh, come, I'll teach you. You can make this move. You can make that move. But you don't know what they're experiencing in their mind. It's a very deep, um, it's a very deep understanding, Arab. So be mindful and be careful about that. Yeah, but like not like in the export level, like just like simple, like any how level. the game works. How the any game level, works. Arab, any level. When you are trying to even explain them how the game works, you don't know what it's feeling in their mind. They can't see those boxes. They can't see the squares. They're just not knowing what the pieces are. If you say, oh, the king. They don't know what the king is. They have to learn to feel the king. How do you feel the king? How do you know the pointed parts are going to be the queens? Think about this, Arav. It sounds, wow, I'm going to do this. It's not, one, it's not easy. Two, sometimes it's not helping. I would uh, also okay, say, Arav, if this is a topic that interests you, there are a lot of YouTube videos on this, actually. So if you Google or you put on YouTube uh, blind chess, there yeah. are specific boards that have been designed that are training prog programs that have already been implemented. So I'd recommend you read through those and see what already exists and either innovate on it or use that and apply to a community near you. But Yeah, I think, yes. Ashna, I think you put it better. Learn before you try to teach. Exactly. Because like I have a few friends who play chess and are blind. Arav, and maybe... Arav uh, we need to move to another question. Okay. We can't go very personal on these questions. Okay, right. You can come back to us later. Okay. I see yeah, thank Anika. You. Thank you, Arav. Anika, did you have a question? Ma'am, so I want to go into the medical field. So based on that, I don't think baking is going to be a lot of help. So I was thinking about what community services based on education or like generally helping the society. What can I do to help my resume? resume? Okay, one thing about community service for every one of you. If you're just doing community service, it has no value on your resume or application. If it is something you're using your intellectual curiosity to do. I love biology. 
I have been studying biology. I have read books. I realized the, you know, my my watchman's daughter had this fall, had a rash, and it was lasting for more than five days. And I wanted to help. And I realized that it's eczema and that they don't even know what eczema is. And dryness is such a big thing because they're not putting creams, right? So you went down and you actually held a conversation on eczema because young girls struggle with eczema. So, you know, if you're going that way into your community service, that's what helps. Coming back to what I was trying to say, I saw this child, you know, who's trying to learn how to play chess and was struggling or had only half the pieces. So I actually sat down and played chess and realized that he has a visible impact, probably because he didn't have specs, probably because he has childhood glaucoma or childhood diabetes, whatever. Make your story personal. Borrow it from your community. Don't come up with great ideas and say, I want to do this, because it becomes very difficult to tangibilize that. I say this with 10 years of experience, so it might sound like, oh, auntie is cutting down our idea. But eventually you'll realize that it, you can only do that much. The smaller you start, the bigger your impact will be. The bigger your impact you want to do, the smaller is going to be your start. So think about that. Big Fish, Small Pond series. Any other questions? I see there's some parents and I've really kept you all quiet. I apologize for this. But parents, any questions? Anyone? Ma'am? Yes. Ma'am, um, how beneficial would it be to make online programs for like old age and elderly people based on teaching them or like trying to help them come out of isolation? Again, depends on your interest, your subject matter, your non-aligned interest. I have a student who was working with senior citizens and teaching them how to be able to use technology, just a laptop, just a Zoom, just a Skype. But she also actually ended up designing a, a, an app to help everything be combined together. And sure, she got into Dartmouth and is working with Facebook now. So that's oh. the thing. I have... 50 other children who said, I want to help senior citizens. None of them have got into Dartmouth. So it's very important to understand who you are. And thus, what is the community you're getting into? It's very That's tricky, I know. But I'm trying to make it as easy for you to understand. You first need to know yourself before you need to know the community. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Anika. Anyone else? Thank you, all of you, for staying right till the end with us, Ninad. As always, I like to start my thanks with you. We never give him an introduction, but he does all the hard work. All of you, questions, queries, asking about us, going for any packages, Ninad's the right guy for it. Ashna, once again, thank you. You really mean a lot to me, and I think we've done a fabulous job, I hope. But please feel free to unmute yourselves now is the time we need a shout out. We do this totally free. So it's really important for us to know, did we help? Did we contribute to your Sunday life? Anyone, please. That's okay, Ria, go for it. I feel like it was very helpful because it gave me like some direction for my passion project because I was quite confused before this and like, it really helped me out to get clarity as to what I wanted to do. Thank you. I appreciate that, Ria. Thank you so much. Prisha? I don't think it's very often uh, we get this kind of help. And I think it's really uh, nice of uh, all of you to help us and get us back on track, guide us. It's just very nice. Oh, appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. And you're right, Prisha. There are very few people who do this. And I'm very surprised that this is the most important aspect of your application, actually. Um, anyone else? Parents, you all have been silent observers. Anika, yes, go for it. I feel like you've given a lot of clarity um, based on what you've told us. And it really cleared a lot of our doubts and tell, told us what options we have and it's also really 
it also you've also cleared so much of confusion that we must have had that it really shows us what we're interested in and what we would like to go in so it's really helped guide thank you and i'm sorry i'm if we couldn't get into every question with you i hope you will do a private meeting with us and we'll help you out okay ma'am thank you arav yeah i just wanted to tell thank you because now i really know like uh, what to do in the future and and i do not have that many doubts as i had before you're a bright child you just have to find one singular direction okay be careful thank you <laughs> thank you um parents any of the parents who want to tell us about their observations at this point of time i'm not sure all right great thank you so much everyone it was fabulous thank you once again for spending your sunday with us be in touch with ninad and we are hoping to look at you in a longer term very soon Bye bye. bye thank you thank you ashna